I'm going to kit bash a Lord Solar for my death core of Krieg. And when kit bashing or converting Lord Solar, there's usually one of three ways to go. Number one, stick with the horse. Get the Lord Solar model, add a bunch of Krieg bits, give him a gas mask, and you're good to go. Or get this amazing, amazing print with the famous pose of Napoleon's painting. It's beautiful, but I'm not really into 3D printing. I prefer kit bashing with Games Workshop bits and a little bit of 3D printed bits maybe. But mainly, I can't really use 3D printed proxies where I play. Second option is a beautiful diorama. And usually people get their base, 80mm base, and put a little table in the center. Something like this from the Gene Steeler Cults. Then put a bunch of dudes around it that are discussing the next big push. And I love that idea. But I also like the third option, which is just changing the idea of the mount. Getting rid of the horse and getting something else instead that your Lord Solar uses to drive into battle. And if you look at Tabletop Tactics, they've got an amazing example of this where the Lord Solar is a dude on a big bike. I love the idea. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to combine the last two options. A little diorama, but in a vehicle that replaces the horse. And in this case, it's appropriately named a Centaur. So what is a Centaur? Well, it's a very old Forge World kit made out of resin. It's horrible to put together, so I already did this off camera because there's no way I want to struggle on camera with this. It needs loads of liquid green stuff to fill in the gaps, but I think it's a pretty cool little model. And it comes with this dozer blade that goes up here, but if you use that one, it hangs over the base as you can see. But if you get rid of that, it's almost a perfect fit and I think I can get away with this, especially if I lift it up a bit and tilt it a little bit so that there's nothing really overhanging on the base. So one issue with this, it's way too low. Where I play, I need to stick pretty close to the dimensions of the original models. But if you got a Scout Sentinel over here, Scout Sentinel is about 10 centimeters high. Lord Solar is about two centimeters higher. So I need to get this high with the tip of the sword of the Lord Solar. So something needs to be sticking out at least that high. So I think I need to add something to the base for this to drive on. And then I need to get something tall in there. But let's first see how I can make a little diorama out of this. So for the diorama, I need a bunch of dudes. And the centaur comes with a bunch of guys. They're sitting down, they're holding their rifles. Not really the impression that a officer would give. But I like this little guy. He is the driver and I'm definitely keeping him. Of course, he needs a driver. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use these bodies over here. And these are prints from Tiny Legends and they print amazing Krieg bits. Absolutely stunningly beautiful stuff. Fantastic armor plates that fit perfectly on your plastic Kriegs. These guys, weapons, uh, engineer options, all kinds of cool stuff that really give your army a lot of Krieg flavor. I use these wheels on my little rattling uh, the field, uh, what is it? Field ordnance battery. It makes everything looks much more Krieg. And so here I got two types of sort of officer models, one with the Aquila on the chest and two with a sash. And so I figure this guy with the Aquila, he can be the big honcho, the big dude, the actual Lord Solar. And maybe I can make something out of these dudes that stand in the same centaur. So let's see how I can position these. And we're gonna do that with a little bit of poster party. Every kid bash his best friend because it allows you to just try some stuff out, see what works. Now, I got the Lord Solar over here, the guy with the nice Aquila on the chest, put a little putty on his foot, and I'm just gonna put him over here because this centaur comes with these cross beams and I need those because it will keep the, keep the, the warped resin plates on the side close to each other and actually make it look like it's a straight vehicle. So the one that goes here on the back and there's one that goes here on the front and that way I think I can make him kind of lean on this beam or put his hands on there with the binoculars, something like that. And then I want a dude standing next to him. I think this guy could be something like a commissar or some other attaché, some I don't know, somebody who works together with the Lord Solar and he too can go up here in the front. And both of them will have this nice vantage point looking out over the centaur. If it's tilted up a little bit, they'll still have good line of sight of the battlefield. Now I said I needed something taller because this needs to become 12 centimeters high, which is really, really quite high. And I figured, how about a beautiful banner? And so I went through my bits box and I found this amazing banner. And uh, this one comes from Grimaldus. 
And Mike Grimaldus isn't fighting on the side of the Imperium anymore. He is fallen to chaos, just like all my Templars. So this one didn't really fit him, but I think it's a beautiful fit for the Death Corps of Krieg. It has a banner that doesn't really show uh, Black Templar iconography. There is an Aquila, there's a sword, there is a word over here saying Imperator V, so Imperator Victrix, I guess, something like the Emperor conquers, the Emperor wins. I love the skeleton, I love the candles. It's a little bit Space Marine flavor, but I think it could do well with Death Core of Krieg. And so, of course, I need the dude to carry the banner. So if I put him over here on that raised little table that they have, or raised seat that they have, I think he can stand over here. Oh, he's jumping off. Well, and then hold the banner up like this, right behind Lord Solar. Also positioning these two dudes behind the banner. And then I have to raise the whole model and I think it will be about 12 centimeters high. So I need some heads and I need some arms. I need these guys to look a bit cooler and have something more to do or talk about. And when making these little dioramas, I always like to get the separate parts on its own little base with some poster putty and on these paint handles. In my case, very, very old paint pots because it just gives you much more a comfort when you're handling these models it's easy to just hold this work on it and not have to hold the miniature and be afraid that maybe something breaks off so let's do the guy with the banner first because i want to get him right the others i don't really see any problem with adding the right arms and, and stuff to hold and a good helmet but this guy is going to be a bit harder because this banner no longer has the stuff that it comes with and if it did I wouldn't use it because it needs some Astra Militarum arms or Death Corps of Krieg arms, ideally. But I'm going for Tempestus Scion arms because they come with a banner pole and two arms that are kind of held like this. And I think with his pose, he's standing at attention, legs close together, holding a banner like this. I think it would look really, really cool. So I'm going to start scraping these arms down because they need to sit flush with the body. And I'm going to see if I can get the banner in place and I'll show you the results. Well, look at him standing here, proud, stoic, banner in his hands. I think it worked out pretty well. Now I'll show you how I did it on the top down camera. So I got here this science arm and I had to cut it to uh, readjust the angle of this arm and fill it with a little bit of liquid green stuff. That still needs some sanding down to make it look a bit more smooth, but it's getting there. The other side, the hand, is supposed to be a lot higher than the other, kind of like this. But I cut off the hand that was on the pole and instead I just put the arm to go like that. Because this way he can hold it upright, perfectly upright. Otherwise he would hold it kind of at an angle and I don't want that in this buggy. He's standing at attention, he's holding that, that banner up straight. Now to put him in the centaur, there's this little seat in the middle and I wanted to originally put him on there. But now I'm thinking if I should maybe put him behind here and then have the banner rest on that seat in some way. Put a little crate in there or something. But I could still put him up here, right behind the two guys up front. Something like this. I think it looks pretty cool. I think it's a good beginning and it also gives me the height that I need. Now, time for the other two. Okay, we got a little situation here. All of the cool bits that Death Corps of Creed models can hold in their hands come in their left hand. The binoculars, the, the watch, the map, all of that is held in the left hand. The only thing that they can hold in the right hand are guns, a grenade and the little booklet that makes him a zealot. And I don't really want that. I want these guys to look like officers. I want at least the binoculars. I would love to have the watch. I kind of want a power sword because that sort of references the Lord Solar model who's sitting on his horse with his massive sword. One of these guys, ideally the guy that is supposed to be the officer should have a power sword. But the power sword is also in the left hand. So I can't give him binoculars and power sword. So I'm gonna revert here to the uh, regular Cadian sprue, the Cadian command sprue and the science sprue. And I'm just gonna look what I can find. I already got here a couple more power swords and a, a pistol at least, a last pistol on the right hand. I'm gonna see what I can find, but I'll be right back. And Tiny Legends to the rescue once more. I found this arm here in the pile of stuff that I got from them. And it is a power sword in a right arm slung over the shoulder. I love this sort of nonchalant look for my Krieg officers. They're not standing there yelling and screaming, waving their swords around, just stoically waiting there until it's their turn to jump in. 
And now I can make this guy uh, wear a power sword and binoculars and the commissar dude gets a last pistol and something like a map. Let me show you what it looks like. And uh, look at him. I think it worked out pretty well. Uh, the arm from Tiny Legends worked out fine and he's now even leaning it on that crossbar. Looks cool with his binoculars. The other guy with the map and a flare pistol. Went for a flare pistol instead of a last pistol. I think it looks cooler and it was a bit that was ready. Like it's just one arm. You don't have to cut and saw and glue another gun on there. And I think it looks pretty cool, especially like this from the front. But I think it is lacking a bit here in the back. And I'm thinking about putting maybe two more guys here. Really cram this space. I think it will look cool as a little diorama. Uh, maybe somebody with some comms equipment. I'm not 100% sure. Maybe just a couple crates. Maybe some stowage. Maybe some backpacks right there. Maybe a medic. I'm gonna go think about this and then continue. And stowage it is. I just got a couple of crates again from Tiny Legends over there and I got this nice antenna from Tiny Legends as well that I just drilled in there, glued in there. And I also decided to put the banner up on the seat in the car because then he is exactly 10 and a half centimeters, almost 11 centimeters high, which is the perfect height for Lord Solar. So I don't have to bother with this piece, put it underneath it to heighten the base or anything. Like this, I can just glue it onto the base and go start painting. Sorry for the interruption, but could you like and share this video with your friends, subscribe to the channel, all that stuff, because I'm really trying to make this work and your support could help me out tremendously. Thank you very much. Back to the video. And I'm going for the classic creek scheme of nice sky blue. So I'm starting with a very heavy dry brush of Stormfang all over the vehicle, followed by a much lighter dry brush of Celestra Grey just to hit the ridges. And then I wash with some heavily diluted panel liner for gray and blue vehicles from AK Interactive. It's kind of black, there's a little bit of blue in there, and I'm just gonna make sure it really goes into the recesses and doesn't stay so much on these surfaces on the top. Now you have a nice shaded mini. Now after this, a little dry brush of silver to just hit the edges here and there, make it look like even the paint has worn off in some places. Especially here where the crew is walking around and standing around, that's where the paint can get scuffed, crates get thrown in, they scrape the paint away and it sort of shows the bare metal. These walking plates here, they're really good for showing a lot of wear and tear. The outside a little bit less because there's lots of rust and stuff coming there. After this, I do the leather on the seats with snake bite leather, the wood of these crates of grenade with some contrast wildwood, contrast black legion for any of these sort of power boxes that are on the side and any cabling that's running through the cabin. Now I've applied a couple of decals and it dries so I'm gonna scratch out little parts of them to make them look a bit more weathered. Otherwise you have these perfectly bright, perfectly lined out decals on a weathered and worn vehicle. It just doesn't look right. Now you have to wait for them to be completely dry and perfectly stuck there, otherwise you're just gonna move them and scrape them off. But this is also pretty much the only way you can do this with such a rough base layer. If your paint looks as rough as it is, like so much pattern, so much texture in there, then what else are you gonna do? You can paint over the decal as well to sort of dumb it down, to sort of desaturate the colors. But this way I think it looks just better. It looks more like the paint is starting to chip off. Now after this, it's time for more weathering and wearing out this little vehicle. And I'm gonna start with some rust streaks from AK Interactive. It's a nice dark brown rust, as you can see here. And I'm just gonna use this to stipple on all of the different bolts that are sticking out. So each and every one of them, I just add a little bit of rust to it. And if I thin it down enough, as I'm doing with some white spirits, then we'll just settle on, on around the bolts rather than on top of it. And that way all of the bolts look like they are starting to corrode and it's all starting to wear out. Now I'm also going to use rust streaks to actually draw rust streaks. I'll show you that now. And for that, I'm just going to look for a place where rust streaks would grow. Like here, under this part, I just first do a horizontal line along that plate. Then I'm going to start drawing streaks going down. And it is a little too light. So let's get a little bit more in here. And there we go. Now this looks awful, it's way too thick and you, it's not really looking like a rust streak. So I'm gonna get a sharper brush, with a finer tip, load it up with white spirits, and then I'm gonna sculpt this rust streak. And I keep wiping off my brush until the rust streak looks like the way I want to. And this is one of the beautiful things of these enamel paints. You can keep working with them, you can reactivate them, you can sculpt and move the paint around, unlike acrylics, once it's there, it's there. But this rust streak, now you have a better looking rust streak. It's more sharp, more tapered. Let's keep going a little bit longer and let's see if I can drag it out a little bit more. 
There. Now we have a nice looking rust streak right where I want it. And I'll do this all over the vehicle and that's gonna take quite a lot of time. Okay, a little bit later and this is what he looks like. I got some really nice rust streaks going on, but I also did a little bit of panel lining. So basically with the rust, go in between any panel that you see to shade it, but also give a little bit of rust in there. And then every bolt, I just put a little drop of the rust on top, you not know, diluted well enough with some white spirits. We're gonna stay with the rust because I want these exhausts to look absolutely rusted through. So I'm gonna start with some typhus corrosion on them. And I'm also gonna stipple a little bit of typhus corrosion on the edges of this centaur. Just because I want to have it really shown like it's wearing out, it is getting knocked, it's getting damaged, and then the corrosion sets in. Not too much, because I don't want this to look like a Death Guard vehicle. It's supposed to be Astro Militarum. So a little bit of rust here and there is okay, but not too much, just here on the edges, for example. And I'll go over all over the mini with this. And then I dry brush the Typhus Corrosion with a little bit of Scrag Brown. Bright orange brown and it's perfect for these rust effects. And I'm just doing this on the exhaust but also on these parts that I just stippled a little bit of the rust on. Just very lightly, just gives a little bit more interesting colors and it contrasts really nicely with the blue of the vehicle because orange blue contrasting colors makes the rust pop a little bit more and makes the blue look sharper as well. So after this I think it's time for some Streaking grime. Grim dark in a pot as it's known and that's a pretty good description. I'm not going to use too much of it I just want to have a little bit streaking down from the top Onto the rest of the vehicle. So I just start here at the top put a little bit here That's on a surface that it, where it can really collect grime and then start streaking down and it works the same as the rust streaks You if you have a line like this that doesn't look good you Just clean your brush and you sharpen the point and again this is quite time consuming, but it adds a lot of extra detail to it, which I like. So it takes some time, but it's worth it. Okay, I'm quite happy. Not too much streaking grime, but just enough to make it look dirty and worn and nasty and just a little bit more variety than only the rust streaks. Now I want to put him on his base, but for that I'm going to have to put some Sterling mud on there first because I want this sort of bombed out World War I look on my army and Sterling mud is the perfect color. And I'm just going to do a very thin layer of this. Then with a bit of super glue he gets glued onto the base and I add some bits and pieces to the base such as a little bit of barbed wire that I've got here and some dead cadian bits as base decoration. We'll use a little bit of contrast paint to give them color. So some skeleton horde for the khakis, some militarum green for the armor, snake bite leather for any leather straps, and griff charger gray for the little bit of exposed skin that I have here in the form of a hand. And then the barbed wire gets a lick of typhus corrosion and so do the bits of armor that are on the body of the Cadian because I wanna make it look like he's been here for a while. And then we take Sterling Mud again and kind of make the mini and the barbed wire blend into the base just by throwing up a little bit of the Sterling Mud over it. Sort of don't make, don't make it look like it's lying on top of the base. And I'm also going to take this opportunity to add a lot of mud to the tracks of the centaur. So especially here at the back, since the track goes up like this, it will be pulling up lots of mud this way and it will kind of get stuck here against that ridge. And then I'll add a little bit more along those tracks. Back to the enamels. I've got here dark dirt deposits from AK Interactive and with this I'm just going to work it into the cabin. Any flat surface in any of the sort of nooks and crannies I'm going to add a little bit of this dust, this dirt in there and it will set the panels apart so it kind of works like a panel liner making more shading and making things look more interesting but it will also show just more dust and dirt and decay and sort of show the wear and tear on this vehicle. Then we'll add some fuel stains here around these fuel caps because you know I've got fuel stains this paint and I never get to use it so this is a perfect opportunity let's just make them look like they've spilled a bit and it's running off here and on the other side too and then a little bit of engine oil here around the stick shift and the gears that he has up front not that that's the engine or that's where engine oil is supposed to be but I think it's just a good place to add some oil and add some more dirt stains then the exhausts. I think they are nice and rusted, but it still looks too clean. It should look like it's burning oil. So here I've got some exhaust wash. First going inside the exhaust, and then I'm also going to start drawing some 
stripes down here. Make it look like it's burning, just sort of belching out black, black flames and black smoke. And it's just also affecting all of the steel that's around it. There, I think I'm all grimed out. Dust is there, rust, dirt, sand, everything is onto the vehicle. I don't think I can do much more or just don't see the blue surface anymore. So time to finish up. First of all, I want to make the soil look like it's still wet. So here I've got some puddles from AK Interactive. Dirty, glossy, dries up perfectly, makes it look all very muddy. And then some dark blood effects around the Cadian bits, just to make it look like this isn't too long ago that these guys went down. And then I glue in the crew and I, I don't paint these in this video because I already have a video on my channel where I'm painting Commissar Gaunt. I'm just using the same paint scheme for all my officers. It's all black, brass with lots of verdigree and make them look rough and dark, but with really nice high contrast in the mini. And so if you want to see that, I recommend you check out this video here. It will show you exactly how to paint these guys. Let me glue them in place. So using super glue, because there's lots of paint on here and plastic glue only works on plastic, not on paint. First the driver goes in his seat. Then the first bar over here, because I need to put this one in place after the driver, otherwise I can't get the driver in. And needs to go in there before I put actual Lord Solar and his Commissar on there. So they're going to be standing on these benches. So Lord Solar goes over here, his power sword resting on that bar. And then the Commissar over here, he as well resting on that little bar, but looking the other way. And then finally, the banner. I worked quite a lot on this banner because I wanted to make it look as good as possible because that's the thing that everybody will see. Now I just got to get him in place without moving Solar and his Commissar too much, without sort of taking up too much space, but I want a banner to look straight forward. So when you're looking at the front of the vehicle, the banner is head on. I think that's the way banner bearers should be standing. Finally, the bar in the back. So that bar in the back goes right here behind the banner bearer. And now it's just a matter of trying to shuffle everything around, making it all fit, making sure everybody is standing upright and not falling over like that. <laughs> I'll show you the results. And that's Lord Solar done, and I'm really happy with the result. I really think it breathes Krieg, and at the same time it's clearly a special character, and I think it's a good proxy for Lord Solar. I like the Centaur, the vehicle, it's really really cool, and it's really typical World War I Krieg style, and so it really fits the army. Going along with all these enamels all over the model, it really makes making this weathering and grinding super easy. And I highly recommend you get into enamels as well as soon as you've mastered acrylics. Because it's, as you can see, it's very simple to get a really, really nice result. And this is not really skill based, it's material based. If you have these enamels, you can get these effects with just a little bit of practice. Now I'm painting a lot more Krieg. So subscribe if you want to see more. There's already Gaunt's Ghost on my channel completely converted. How I'm painting my regular infantry, how I'm painting my officers, and there's a lot more coming.